Welcome to the July 2021 edition of the ASCE Journal Series. My name is Katoyun Rezaei, and I'm an Associate Professor of Pathology at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C., and I have nothing to disclose. The 2021 January-February issue of JASC was devoted as the Urine Cytology Special Edition, with many notable studies from morphologic reappraisal of the Paris system to the application of new technologies such as immunohistochemistry and next-generation sequencing. The article that I picked out for the discussion today has a different twist, as it offers a deeper insight on how to effectively assess the diagnostic accuracy of urine cytology in an era of evidence-based practice of medicine. It is authored by Dr. Miles and colleagues and is titled Evidence-Based Diagnostic Accuracy Measurement in Urine Cytology Using Likelihood Ratios. The objectives of this study are twofold. First is to promote a statistically sound and clinically relevant evidence-based cytology practice based on post-test probability of malignancy in urine cytology. And this will be accomplished by accounting for pre-test probability in each individual practice and individual patient and application of likelihood ratio as a measurement of diagnostic accuracy. And second is to compare the diagnostic accuracy of the Paris system to that of a historic urine cytology reporting system. Before discussing the details of this work, it will be helpful to briefly talk about evidence-based medicine in general. It has been a long stand, it has a long-standing history, but in the past few decades, there has been a wider global recognition and demand. It has been defined as the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of current best evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients. And that happens by integrating the individual clinical expertise and the best clinical external evidence. As such, it pleads for relevant clinical research to produce the highest accuracy and precision in diagnostic tests. And needless to say, with pathology at the forefront of diagnostic workup, pathologists and in particular cytopathologists have taken many steps to fulfill the need for generating a reproducible, highly high quality and clinically relevant diagnosis based on the best evidence. In this regard, attention has been paid to the various aspects of diagnostic testing, including sampling and specimen adequacy, morphologic criteria and identification, which is the basis of classification systems, and integrated reporting. All of these efforts have been used to develop practice guidelines by professional organization that is summarized in a chart uh, in next um, diagram. This diagram emphasizes the process with a continuous feedback and revision based on the ongoing research. These efforts led to the concept of inclusion of risk of malignancy, or ROM, as a measure of target system performance in clinical practice. And it was included in the newer cytology classifications, such as the Bethesda system for reporting thyroid cytopathology and the Paris system for reporting urinary cytopathology. At the same rate, with an increased popularity of ROM assessment in cytology literature, broad variations between publications were apparent, mainly due to differing clinical practice setting and individual patient variables and presentations. This underscored the need for alignment of research methodology in cytopathology with the established scientific principles of evidence-based medicine and the judicious use of diagnostic testing statistics. These variation and inconsistencies have been the basis of the work of the authors in this current article, where Miles and colleagues argued that ROM, as it has been applied in the cytology literature so far, is not truly indicative of risk of malignancy. There is a different statistical meaning of risk and, and chance, and ROM is really a chance, is a mathematical probability of having malignancy in a patient with a certain diagnostic test, which means that the disease already exists and we are looking for a post-test probability of how to find it. It is fundamentally different from the epidemiologic definition of risk factor, where the disease, disease come to an existence after exposure over time. 
With the more appropriate concept of postess probability, we are looking at a uh, Bayesian function of two essential and interconnected data elements. One is the pretest probability of the disease in an individual patient, similar to prevalence in population studies, and the other is the diagnostic information or the test properties, which are the values of sensitivity, specificity, and likelihood ratios. The frequent and incurrent separation of the two elements and pure emphasis of the test properties, the problem is caused as it promotes an unrealistic assumption as the diagnostic tests are always and absolutely accurate, an assumption that is far from the reality of modern medicine. So going back for, um, to account for both pretesting um, probability and test properties, it is best to include likelihood ratios in dealing with multi-level diagnostic test systems, such as urine cytology. LRs are relatively stable metrics of diagnostic test accuracy, and the interplay between the pretest probability and likelihood ratios can be easily and visually depicted in Fagan pneumograms. That can easily be used, and it clearly shows how the post-test probability of a target condition changes with prevalence of mal malignancy in various practices. And later we go over some examples of, of this uh, nomogram in the article. As relating to the topic at hand, and not surprisingly, in the context of urological population, the post-test probability of malignancy in each individual patient is the most valuable piece of cytologic diagnostic information. And that is by accounting for pretest probability that includes clinical, cystoscopic, and or imaging information, and the cytologic test information, which was expressed as likelihood ratio for each unique patient. Now, turning our attention to this study, as outlined earlier, the authors proposed adaptations of likelihood ratio as an evidence-based measurement of diagnostic information in multi-level cytopathology classification systems and using likelihood ratios as a way to compare the diagnostic accuracy of pre-Paris system and post-Paris system urine cytology classification systems. In doing so, the authors reanalyzed their existing departmental data data set from a prior publication using evidence-based medicine methodology based on the standards of reporting of diagnostic accuracy or a start 20, 2015 guidelines. Uh, they uh, also, their study population were sequential voided urine cytology cases with histologic follow-up that included 188 cases of the pre-Paris system and 176 cases post-Paris system classification. They defined the following points in their study. Index test as urine liquid-based cytology, PIMPREP and Papanicolaou stain, Reference test as bladder biopsy uh, that is processed uh, with the standard surgical pathology as a formal in fixed uh, tissue and uh, HNU stain. Um, the interval between the urine cytology and the biopsy was no more than six months. And the outcome measure was biopsy result as positive or negative for high grade urothelial carcinoma compared to urine cytology and the calculation of likelihood ratio for each diagnostic category with 95% confidence interval was done based on the biopsy outcome. Using the statistical formula, they calculated the likely ratios as true positive percentage over false positive percentage with a 95% confidence interval. With the following interpretation of uh, likelihood ratio, likelihood ratio of one um, means non-diagnostic. Anything above one favors the target condition, and anything above 10 strongly favors the target condition, whereas likelihood ratios less than one favor exclusion of the target condition, and likelihood ratios less than 0.1 strongly favor exclusion of the target condition. Then they followed three steps to determine post-test probability. 
First, they estimated the pretest probability, as we talked about, based on the existing urologic uh, literature and the urologist experience. It's not an exact number, more of an, an educated guess on individual patient. It uh, ranges from a few percent in asymptomatic hematuria patient to above 50% and 80-90% in patients with bladder mass with worrisome features. They calculated the likelihood ratios relevant to the cytology and they marked it on the Fagan nomogram and they linked the pretest probability in percentage of the disease and the likelihood ratio resulting in a post-test prob post probability in percentage. Calculation of the likelihood ratio with 95% confidence interval for each level of urine cytology result, they use the values of true and false urine cytology results against the histologic diagnosis of high-grade urothelial carcinoma. That's in the post-TPS and pre-TPS cohort of their patients. And not surprisingly, it showed the highest discriminatory power for high-grade urothelial carcinoma category, moderate for benign and suspicious for high-grade urothelial uh, carcinoma categories, and indiscriminate for atypical urothelial cell category. In the next two slides, um, there are two tables that are depicted as table one and table two from the article that they detail the actual numbers and percentages of different diagnostic categories in both cohorts of pre-TPS and post-TPS with their calculated uh, likelihood ratios. And now the next three slides will show you examples of the practical examples of determining post-test probability of high-grade urothelial carcinoma after urine cytology test by the Paris system. These examples that I'm showing is only by the Paris system uh, classification in individual patients using likelihood ratios and Fagan nomogram. Uh, the first example shows the post-test probability in a patient who has bladder mass on imaging. This patient will have a high pretest probability, about 80%, and then the urine cytology diagnosis was high-grade urothelial carcinoma uh, by the TPS, and that uh, would allow for a calculation of the likelihood ratio based on the numbers in the tables that I showed you uh, previously of a likelihood ratio of 7. By connecting the 80% pretest probability to the likelihood ratio of seven in the middle uh, vertical column, uh, we will end up with a post-test probability of around 99%. Um, and it will have a, a, a range. So this one is, has between 95 and 99% range. The next patient is the post-test probability of high-grade urethelial carcinoma if the patient has bladder mass on imaging, which again, it would have a high pretest probability at 50% um, or higher, but the urine cytology diagnosis of, uh, based on TPS was suspicious for high grade urothelial carcinoma. And again, the likelihood ratio that was calculated ended up in 3.1, and the post test probability, again, using the same. Um, uh, uh, Fagan nomogram will put us in about 80% uh, post-test probability. Whereas in example three, we're talking about a patient that doesn't have any uh, bladder mass or anything else by the imaging, but has only asymptomatic hematuria. To begin with, this patient has a low pretest probability, which is about less than 5%. The urine cytology in this patient based on TPS was um, diagnosed as atypical urothelial cells, which puts it for a likelihood ratio of 0.9. And in this manner, once we do whatever we did with the other two examples, we end up at the post-test probability that remains the same as the pre-test probability, about less than 5%. So, as for comparison of pre-TPS and TPS using likelihood ratios, it seemed that the diagnostic accuracy for both systems essentially unchanged, except for the atypical category. 
as the calculated likelihood ratio for TPS AUC, atypical urothelial cells by the TPS, was 0.9, that is a statistically non-discriminate and indeterminate. Whereas the likelihood ratio for the pre-TPS atypical category was 0.5, that is more likely associated with a non-malignant outcome. Therefore, the TPS AUS is clinically more meaningful than the uh, pre-TPS classifications. The authors also noted that there was no statistically significant difference in the use of ATPO between the two systems in their cohorts. And uh, so that's, that doesn't explain the fact that we are um, taking TPS AUS as a more meaningful uh, interpretation. Um, because we also showed that the difference was a statistically significant um, when the TPS AUS followed up by biopsies and they had a significant, more significant association with high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Finally, the authors reached the following conclusions. They have successfully applied the likelihood ratio methodology to evidence-based urine cytology practice by allowing for a quantitative performance measure across different scenarios making it a personalized approach by accounting for individual patient differences and pretest probabilities, by adding a numeric information on diagnostic test accuracy and post-test probability, by announcing that likelihood ratio is being superior to binary parameters such as sensitivity and specificity in multi-level diagnostic test systems, and they also showed on the side reproducibility when they used the likelihood ratio methodology uh, and applied it to a different cohort of patients in a different study. Uh, the details of that study is not um, depicted in this article, but they showed that the same way that they used likelihood ratio in their cohort, when they used the same methodology in the other cohort, they reached the same conclusions. They also showed successful direct comparison of performance of pre-TSP and post-TSP by using likelihood ratios. They showed significant improvement in the TPS AUC category compared to the pre-TPS atypical category, and that justifies further patient investigation in the TPS AUC category. The study also allowed for potential future application of similar analytical evidence-based diagnostic testing methodology to other cytopathology test organ systems. And finally, at the end of the day, as pathologists, we continuously strive for diagnostic excellence, and we also are constantly aware of the patient as a whole and in the context of all the relevant clinical information. We do so to avoid practicing in an isolated vacuum. With that in mind, expanding our knowledge in application of logical statistical analysis of the findings and applying sound evidence-based methodologies are necessary and invaluable in promoting patient-centric and personalized practice of medicine. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>